Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can make a clock just like this one. First things first, I want to show you three functions within P5.js, hour, minute, and second that return values of the current hour, minute, and second of the time, the current time. So I'm going to print hour, minute, and second. Okay, now you can see, as of the time of coding, it is 1 o'clock, 36 minutes, and 48 seconds, 49.50. So within a draw function, I'm going to create three variables. Let h equals to hour, let m equals to minute, and let s equals to second. Okay, and so you know that now, these variables contain the values of hour, minute, and second of the actual time. And what are we going to do? We're going to first draw the clock, right? And I'm going to use an ellipse function. And I want the clock to be in the middle of my canvas. So the first two arguments are going to be the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle. And then the third and the fourth are going to be the width and the height of the circle. So let's do 250 instead of actually using width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 as the x and y arguments here, I'm actually going to use a translate function. And a translate function takes in two arguments, and it basically just change the location of the origin. So it translates the current system. So the origin that was going to be at the top left corner here is going to be moved to wherever I set as arguments here. So it's going to be width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. And now within the ellipse function, I can just put 0, 0 as the first two arguments. If you click play, it should be exactly the same. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's going to be much easier for us to draw the hour, minute, and second hands relative to the new origin point. So in order for me to draw the hour, the minute, and the second hand, I need to use the concept of trigonometry in order for me to find the location within the circle. And I made a video on how to convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates using trigonometry. So you can check that out for more information. But essentially what we need is that we need two variables. The first one is the angle at which that point should be. The second thing is that we need to know the length or the radius of how long the hand is going to be. So first, let's look at what the angle should be. The hour, the minute, and the second functions here returns values. For hour, it's between 0 and 24, right? For minutes, it's between 0 and 60. And the same four seconds, it's between 0 and 60. But for us to figure out what that is in angle, we want the values between 0 and 360. Actually, within angles, the arguments that we can use can be in the form of either radians or degrees. I'm not going to touch on the differences between those two right now. I'm going to use the one that most people are familiar with, which is degrees. And we can do that by first setting the angle mode to degrees. And then I'm going to create three variables. The first one is going to be h angle. And then I'm going to use the function called map. And map takes in a total of five arguments. The first argument is going to be, what do you want to map? So I want to map first the hour, so h. But because h gives the value between 0 and 24, and because our clock is only going to be between 0 and 12, I'm going to subtract it by 12. Right now, it's at 1 o'clock. So instead of providing the value 13, I want it to be 1. And then I want to map it between, so it's going to be between 0 and 12. And then I want to have it map it to 0 and 360. Same thing for the minute angle. It's going to be map between 0 and 60 to 0 and 360. And then second angle will be map between 0 to 60 to 0 and 360. And then now using trigonometry, we can figure out what is the x and y coordinate at which the hour, the minute, and the second hand should be drawn. So I'm going to do let hx equals to, so h length 
which is the radius or the size of the hour hand times cosine of h angle. And then let hy equals to h length times sine of h angle. And before we move on, let me just first set the value for h length. Let's do it to be um, 60, and then we do m length. Let's do that a little bit longer to 25, and then we do the second length for the second hand. Let's do it at 100. And then we can copy and paste this for the minute hand, and then the second hand. So if we were just first draw ellipse from hx and hy to, um, let's do the size of 20. Okay, so now you see that we have the hour the minute and the second, but that doesn't look like it is 1 o'clock and 45 minutes, which is what it is right now. Let me also draw a line so that you can see easier. So line will go from 0, 0 to hx and hy, and then Okay, why is it not actually showing me 1 o'clock and 46 minutes? Do you see that it actually is 90 degrees to the right? And that is because actually the axis of how you draw this starts from this point here, where the x-axis is. So what we want to do is that we want to rotate it by 90 degrees to the left. And you can just write a rotate function here and you want to rotate it by 90 degrees and there you go now you get 1 o'clock and 46 47 minutes and the second but let's do I thought that my second hand is the longest ah this is what I forgot okay and there you go the last piece, which is maybe the most fun piece for most of you guys, is let's beautify this a little bit. What if we first just kind of group this together, and then we can give it a different color and stroke size. So let's do stroke of 125, 0 to 55. About this and then let's do stroke weight to be three and how about let's do right now I'm just do random colors I have no idea what colors I am writing right now but let's try it oh I don't know if I like this stroke weight maybe not too bad not too bad um, and then I also want the stroke color this to be let's do black okay so this might not be the prettiest clock that you have seen but you know exactly what you need to do to get the hour the minute and the second of the current time try to see if you can come up with a more interesting and more beautiful way of displaying time using the concept that we have learned so far give it a try